Okay, hello, welcome back to another game today playing E4, and I have a rainbow machine smoothie. So the only thing that could really make this day any better is a Philidor defense, apparently. Uh, D4 here, and we're going to see what, what, what Black rather plays. We'll take this pawn, just all book theory, uh, knight c3, and we've got both knights developed, nice central pawn. Um, so, yeah, I think, actually... I'm going to go for a setup that I often like to play with, um, where you have bishop e3 and the queen on d2, uh, especially when black castles kingside, you can often play f3, g4, h4, those kind of ideas, and castle queenside yourself. So that is my general game plan. However, if I want to execute this game plan before bishop e3, I think I need to play bishop e2, uh, because if bishop e3, I don't want to allow knight g4, but now... I can play bishop e3 because knight g4 simply uh, hangs a knight. So, yeah, I'll play queen d2. Still haven't committed to anything in terms of castling in either direction. Uh, black is playing almost like it's a Sicilian, I guess. There's this move, actually, knight to f5, uh, which looks really strong, actually. I'm not... Okay, you know what? We're going to play knight to f5. Threatening to take on g7 with check to which I can simply come back out. My opponent castles. Um, we have a very powerful knight here, and if the g-pawn comes to g6, we're going to be able to bring the bishop in, and then maybe even sack the knight. Oh, this could get interesting. Okay, I think I'm going to start with f3. I think I have to play f3 because I need to hold this uh, e-pawn, which is under attack. I also want to justify the push of g4, um, a little more, but g6 is going to be certainly a weakening move for the dark squares of the position. I could even go knight h6 check. Uh, however, yeah, this this knight is extremely strong. So the best way to work with that, well, that's a good question actually. What is the best way to work with that? Could I play bishop h6 if takes queen h6 is just mate what wait 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 bishop h6 can you just not take this queen h6 can you move the king it's mate can you move the rook it's mate can you move the knight to h5 i just take the knight there's knight e8 in that line actually bishop h6 pawn takes queen takes knight to e8 which uh which may ruin the interesting plans you know what let's just play h4 i want to get this rook open I desperately want an open uh, h-file, and my opponent goes back. They want to remove this knight. I mean, it is very, very strong. I can understand that most certainly, but I'm now going to play g4. And if they try and remove this knight, well, now I get to open my g-file, uh, which is definitely going to be very helpful. I can probably castle now, and I probably need to, so as not to lose this pawn with check. I do not mind losing it uh, at all, really, because it's actually just an open h-file. So I think I'm just going to castle here. Not really scared about uh, knight g3. My light square bishop isn't that good anyway. Uh, but they do take here. And now there are two pieces on this h file. Uh, but I'm going to be able to put my rooks on the h and g files and hopefully do a lot of damage here. Hmm. Okay. What about... I mean, knight d5 also looks quite strong. Hmm. My thought process generally is I, I want a rook on g1 at some point. Um, I want to probably play knight d5 also at some point, and maybe even try and play f6 uh, once the rook's on g1, so this pawn can't take, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on there. The point being that my rook obviously before couldn't take this knight, but... Now, if the bishop moves, this knight's going to hang. So, I don't know. I could maybe play. I think, right, you know what? Let's just start with rook g1. Very simple. Both rooks on two open files in front of the king. For the price of one pawn, uh, I really think that's got to be worth it. Got the bishop pair as well. Uh, my opponent's knight on c6 is going to prevent uh, the c pawn being pushed and therefore makes d5 uh, a much softer square at the moment which is why I'm like really looking for that. Also because of the transfer point to maybe 
F4 even. Uh, there's just a lot of nice play, you know, surrounding this sort of pawn structure here, which can be very strong and very annoying for black. But mainly it's these rooks. I mean, what is this rook doing? What is this rook doing? But these rooks are doing a lot. So that's why I'm arguing that the uh, sacrifice in the pawn was worth it there. This is really good. I mean, I'm not sponsored. I should be, though. I have a lot of subscribers, like 630 something. Okay. Black plays g6, which I can take. I can also play bishop h6, pretty much forcing uh, rook e8. I'm aware there's knight g7, but I have zero faith in that move. I think I should just take this. I mean, it just weakens this square so much. Um, actually, I, I also could go for knight d5, because there's no threat of takes. Actually, why would I even take this? There's no threat of takes here. You can't really push, because I can just take. So I think I'm actually going to play knight d5 and say, well, thanks for playing g6. You've just completely weakened the f6 square. And, I mean, I don't know, bishop h6, there was also a strong argument for that move. But... I think my bishop's already quite active. I want to get this knight involved as well. Um, because, you know, you can see all my pieces sort of converging um, on the enemy king here. I need to improve this light square bishop a little, but with this pawn structure, it was sort of destined to not be my best piece. Hopefully, though, with a move like uh, f4, it can be very useful. Okay, king steps out of the g file. That makes a lot of sense. I could play check though. Knight takes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I could play check even and just win a knight. Now that looks strong, although I don't win a knight because here, but then I do because f4. Okay. Queen c3 check. Knight e5, f4. That's got to be good. That's got to be winning. Okay, we're going to go for this. The king has. Somewhat rightly stepped out of the G file, but actually, I don't think it is very good because this diagonal is completely weak. And yeah, the king comes back, but now I can just take this knight. Also, I'm thinking I could probably take other things, but I'm just going to take this knight first. Should I? Surely there's something else. Surely there's something very beautiful going on. Um, may play this first. Let's just take the knight because you know what? I've earned it. I've you know I've earned myself a free knight. I'll take it. I'll take another swig of my naked rainbow machine. I'm not sponsored, but please sponsor me naked. Okay. We see the attempt at a fork here. Uh, a frankly, embarrassing attempt at a fork. <laughs> that was a bit harsh. Um, I could take this bishop. No, I couldn't. I could take this knight. I'm just trying to think of something like cool and sacrificial. Um, I mean, I'm going to want to play f6 maybe at some point. I should probably just be playing rook h2 is the the very simple answer here. Yeah, let's just play rook h2 because, I mean, we protect this bishop, but also we're going to want to lift the rook at some point to go the other rook to h1 and um, do all sorts of nasty things along the h file here. But we just do have a piece uh, for a pawn at the moment. And, well, takes the, uh, the light square bishop, but I did not want that bishop anyway. This bishop is the powerful one. This is the one that's going to be uh, looking at soft enemy squares. And now, I mean, f4 looks really good. Um, f6 looks really good. I could take this. I could probably go here. Actually, that also... I have about 9 million winning moves. What's a really cool one? Rook h2 looks pretty cool, actually. That, I mean, yeah. Rook h2. I like rook h2 a lot. We hit the bishop. It has no moves uh, where it doesn't hang. And currently, this rook pins the pawn to the king, so it's not protected. Now, we could see uh, king to h8, which we do. But now I can hop onto this diagonal. And surely I'm doing really well. Could even make the queen active again. And takes here. 
I mean, mm, I could probably take this actually. Pawn takes. I'm not entirely sure. Might not have been the best idea. I could play f6. You know what? Let's play f6. I just want to play f6 because it's pretty fun. Um, the idea of maybe to take g5, disconnect the queen uh, from the protection of that g5 square. Now the pawn comes up here, but it's got to all fall apart. I mean, look at this. Just look at these rooks. So, I, I mean, I can play bishop takes here, actually. Bishop takes, but then rook here, maybe? And I can just come back. Then the bishop's going to go here. Okay, you know what? Let's let's just think about this. How about bishop, rook takes bishop here, pawn takes. Yeah, this looks pretty funny. Okay, we're going to play rook takes bishop. Um, because, of course, instead of going for the best moves, we're going to go for the funniest moves. And then bishop takes h6. And I'm going to put my bishop on g7, uh, which is going to be quite amusing. Just bishop g7 is actually just very funny. I mean, if rook takes, we can just take it. But this, I mean, this is still surely completely winning. Because if the king comes up, what am I going to do? Maybe here? Okay, we don't see that. Uh, we're going to see pawn takes actually, forcing the king to one of these two squares. And then I'm going to try and jump in with the knight somewhere. Uh, I could take this, actually. There are many moves that seem to work. I could play knight to... Oh, I could go knight check, actually. That is a move. Because if queen takes, I can take this rook. So knight check, forcing king h6. Um... And then something. Okay, what about here? You can't take. I'm just going to promote. Is that the idea? Just knight e7. I'm not seeing anything with knight check. King. Whoa, I have no time. Okay, let's just play this move. Because I'm actually just threatening to promote. If you take, I take your rook. And then I'm threatening to like mate you. Um, and also promote. Yeah, knight e7 is quite a nice way of, of finishing it. Uh, yeah, queen takes. Deflect it off the rook. And yeah, there's just going to be mate on H8, I think. I don't really see how this gets stopped. I mean, there's no checks even somehow. There's, It's just a very hopeless position. And we've got plenty of time to win it because we're just going to be able to either promote the pawn or go queen H8 check uh, and probably checkmate. And look, there we go. Queen H8 is checkmate. Can I play something cooler? Maybe. Like, what if I promote to a bishop? Where does that leave me? Hmm, let's not mess around. Let's just let's just go checkmate and secure the win. Okay, let's look at the analysis. Okay, so let's go through the game. Uh, e4, e5, knight f3, d6, and d4. Um, this is a Philidor defense. D4 is the way I play against the Philidor. It's the way most people play against the Philidor, I believe. Uh, we see takes and knight takes. Bishop e7, which I think illustrates just, you know, why Stockfish actually does not respect the Philidor and gives it this little question mark, exclamation mark. It's a, it's a perfectly playable opening. Um, however, you know, this dark square bishop is a little passive from the outset because this d6 pawn is kind of in the way, which allows me to play knight c3 and have, you know, a marginally, marginally better position uh, from the outset. I think just an easier to play position personally. Um, as you saw, bishop e2, uh, my opponent played a6, and then bishop e3 here. Uh, my opponent played b5, which I thought wasn't too bad. Um, it's a book move in a lot of Sicilian lines, I believe, but this isn't actually a Sicilian. Um, however, I was kind of playing it like it was a Sicilian. This is basically the exact move order I do play against an open Sicilian. Um, but yeah, I could have gone for bishop f3 here, actually, threatening some ideas um, along this diagonal. But I decided to carry on with my plan and just go uh, queen d2. I saw bishop b7, um, and then knight f5 was... A very good move. 1.7 uh, is the evaluation here, putting pressure on this pawn and the bishop. And of course, my opponent castles here um, so as not to hang the g7 pawn. Bishop f8 would have been okay, but 
and the king is going to be stranded in the center for far longer. Um, so here's where I went f3, uh, which was actually the best move to secure uh, this e pawn, and also, as I said, justify the push of the g pawn. Uh, knight c6 and h4 and i think the knight c6 move you can see why b5 wasn't the greatest later in the game uh, after that knight is actually destabilized and quite loose when i forked it with the queen but yeah just throwing the h pawn up there was actually the best move let's turn on the engine here g4 queenside castles but h4 the, the evaluation is all the same basically as i said we're going to play all of those moves um pretty much regardless of order stockfish seems to think that they're all good um, and after the bishop goes back here, I could have taken the bishop, but I really liked playing g4. Stockfish didn't agree so much, but actually after takes, takes, the open g file um, is really pleasant, although d5 would have been a bit of a nuisance, actually. Um, the knight goes to h5, and from here on out, it was pretty much just completely winning for me. Because um, as I said, castle queenside here, and, you know, this pawn is not really hanging. I mean, technically, yes, it is. But taking it, as you can see, the evaluation rockets up to 7.9 because rook g1, best move, just putting the rooks uh, on the g and h files in front of the castle king. And you saw what kind of havoc that wreaked. So g6, worsening the um, dark squares, not the best move. But to be fair, I would not know what to play as black. Um, I went for knight d5 to try and get my piece involved. The computer wanted, wanted rook g4, actually. Wow, okay, rook g4, and then, well, let's say the bishop drops back. Oh, then I can, of course, just take this knight. Yeah, okay, so the bishop can't move. That's why rook g4 is really good. Um, but I went for knight d5. The king moved, and I just went queen c3 check, uh, to which my opponent just stepped back. They could have gone, let's just double check that the line I was talking about uh, made sense. So I went check, the knight comes to here, and then, yeah, f4, best move. Rook can come, uh, knight, rather, can come into here. And actually sacrificing it and after bishop takes whoa bishop back is the best move okay i mean stockfish has some crazy lines but i could have just taken uh, and been up plenty of material so that would have worked however my opponent went back i took the knight and after the knight jumped in rook h2 obviously the best move um knight takes bishop rook takes and as you know as i said that bishop wasn't really going to be that useful anyway uh, with this pawn structure but the pawn comes up here Rook h2, actually, best move. Threatening to take the bishop. Um, and, yeah, the king moves. And I should have gone for this check. But I didn't really want to allow uh, my opponent to play f6. It would have been fine because after takes, takes, I play knight takes here and I'm threatening mate with the discovery. Wow, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I just thought I wanted to play f6 myself because it was pretty funny. And, you know, reroute the bishop and get it in on g7 as we did. Um, so I played f6. All of this again completely winning um and i addressed the idea of bishop takes g5 that was the best move here um however i went for rook takes and after pawn takes bishop takes because there's just bishop g7 which i think is quite amusing having the bishop fianchettoed but you know right next to the king on h8 there um and after rook takes pawn takes the king's forced up um knight e7 and then after takes takes there's just nothing really to do to stop mate it's mate in three uh, my opponent obviously was not uh, so resilient but yeah i mean from from this position would knight f6 have been interesting uh yeah queen takes and takes the rook there but if they'd moved the king then it's like queen c3 apparently and after takes oh because i'm still holding the knight of course okay yeah queen c3 is pretty cool actually and i can probably go in with uh queen e3 check but you know end of the game in style of course um, with that little deflection tactic and then coming across for checkmate. If I promoted to a knight, it would have still been winning. But I would have had to think. And that is not what I am going to do this evening. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. Um, and if you're old, happy birthday, I guess. Goodbye.